At a moment when our economic recovery demands more jobs, more momentum, we've got yet another self-inflicted crisis that set our economy back. And for what? There was no economic rationale for all of this. Over the past four years, our economy has been growing. Our businesses have been creating jobs. And our deficits have been cut in half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obama's utopia. That was him uh, starting the um, Spike the Ball campaign before the media earlier today. And welcome back to the Steve Molesberg Show. Joining us now is Tim Stanley, columnist for the UK Daily Telegraph and the Sunday Telegraph. He's a historian and a writer on American history and joins us from uh, across the pond, as they say. Hello, uh, Tim. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Nice to speak to you. Well, nice to speak to you. Okay, so you wrote a piece talking about how uh, Barack Obama has won this uh, round, uh, but his prize is basically uh, a, a lame duck presidency. Yeah, absolutely. I don't see why anyone should be crowing about this whatsoever. This was one battle that the Republicans were judged to have lost, but there have been so many that Obama has lost. He lost his battle over gun control at the beginning of the year, couldn't even get a simple measure through the Senate. Uh, he lost control of foreign policy when he, he tried to make that something about Congress when it came to Syria and then gave up altogether. This is one battle which, in terms of public relations, the Republicans have lost. But what has Obama won? The government is still divided. The debt is still high. And Obama Republicans have lost. But what has Obama won? The government is still divided. The debt is still high. And Obama will. No, but, I, you know, Newt Gingrich, uh, we played a soundbite uh, just before you came on, and uh, he said that it was a sad day for America, and this was yesterday, because what we learned was we have a president uh, who decided he will not negotiate, and it's his way or the highway, and he, uh, and I said this even before Newt Gingrich said it, I said what the Republicans should have said was, hey, yeah, we're waving the white flag, but we're waving the white flag to, to protect America from a president who's willing to, to, to send us into an economic catastrophe uh, over something as small as the uh, medical device tax or delaying the individual mandate for a year, uh, something for which there's great support not only in the nation but in the Senate. So, I mean, we've seen his true colors, and if, he's willing, if he was willing to do it this time, he's now set a precedent. Why should he ever negotiate anything like this in the future? I, I couldn't agree more. There's been no sadder sight in the last two weeks of Republicans and conservatives going on TV to say, we're happy to talk, but we've got no one to talk to. And then the mainstream media hammering them for not talking to anyone. There was no one to talk to because Barack Obama refused to talk to them. His exact words were, I'm prepared to negotiate, but not compromise. But what kind of negotiation doesn't end in compromise? A negotiation in which you expect your opponents to totally surrender, which, of course, they ended up doing. So, yeah, Obama has made it quite clear that he doesn't want to talk, he doesn't want to negotiate, he doesn't want to compromise. How on earth are Republicans supposed to work with that? And yet, bizarrely, because of the mainstream media, it's the Republicans that have come out of it looking like the unreasonable ones. That's well, how amazing it, the White House spin machine is. It is. And, and, you know, there were polls that keep talking about these polls, these polls, these polls. You know, the AP poll showed Obama's approval rating at 37 uh, percent. That same AP poll showed his rating, his approval rate, disapproval rating with independence at 60 percent, which was uh, 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 legitimized in a, in, a, in a subsequent poll by another organization that showed his disapproval rating with independence at 57 percent. So, I mean, if they wanted to be fair or give any, any you know, pretense of fairness, they would have mentioned and talked about those numbers as well. In fact, the Wall Street Journal poll that they kept citing the Republicans are to blame offered four choices. The Republicans in Congress, Obama, both, or not sure. It didn't even offer the Democrats in, in Congress as a, as a possibility. So when you, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you, you see from, from afar what's going on in this country with, the, with uh, this make-believe media we have. Well, you know, sometimes it's important to be seeing it from afar, because if you actually sit down and read the narrative of what happened, the Republicans suggested something to the Senate. The Senate, for, you know, like the fourth time, said no to a budget. That kind of makes the Democrats in the Senate look like the ones who said no. And then the president says, I will not negotiate. That's what really happened. But you do not get that from the media, uh, because the media has stuck with this narrative of it's Obama, it's Obama, Obama. If you look at those polls, American people are saying... Yeah, we blame the Republicans. We don't like the Republicans, but almost as many people are saying, nearly as many people are saying, and we don't like the Democrats. 
and we don't like Obama. There's anger at the system. There's anger at the debt. There's anger at the deadlock. It's not necessarily a rejection of conservatism. That's not what's anger at the debt. There's anger at the deadlock. It's not necessarily a rejection of conservatism. That's not what's. It, you don't put it in these words, but I do, and I think you might agree. I think it'd be foolish uh, for the Republicans. I heard uh, um, the, the former uh, majority leader of the uh, of the House, Tom Delay, was on CNN today, and I couldn't agree with him more. Republicans just have to stick to their guns. Uh, Republicans have to, uh, you know, keep uh, keep uh, satisfying their base and, and and not capitulating. And the people like McCain and Graham and the, those in the Senate that uh, think that it's so awful, the Ted Cruz's are so awful, uh, they don't really represent uh, the, the, the conservative uh, Republican base in this country anymore. Yeah, I mean, look, if the Republicans are going to be dumb, they can re-nominate another Mitt Romney. Are you really saying that after a year, just a, under a year after Mitt Romney, a boring centrist who no one trusted who surrendered on many of the major policy points, that we should renominate another one of those guys? That what America wants is a rematch between a hardcore Democrat who knows what he believes in and a Republican who will compromise? The Republicans have tried that. They did that in 08. They did that in 2012. Why not try actually running on their principles? It, it's a risk. Don't get me wrong. It is a risk. But all the moderate choices have been tried. And they have repeatedly failed. People have rejected that strategy time and time again. Yep, yep. Well, Tim, I appreciate your uh, your insight. Hope you'll come back, sir. I'd love to. Nice to speak to you. You too. Uh, it's Tim Stanley, columnist for the UK Daily Telegraph and the Sunday Telegraph. He's a historian uh, on American history, and uh, interesting to uh, to get his perspective from uh, overseas. And um, yeah, and I'll add to what he has said, as I've added to it in the past, and also said this. Not only do you need a, 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 a Republican who sticks to his values in 016, but you need one who understands everything we just said about the media and will fight and fight and fight and fight. Otherwise, it's going to be the same outcome. Same outcome. And, um, you know, why even hold the election if that's going to be the case? All right, when we come back, Alan Dershowitz joins us. He has a new book, Taking the Stand, My Life in the Law. Should be interesting on the Steve Malsberg Show.